Hello, hockey fans of all ages, shapes, and sizes. Can a negative reporter uh, negatively impact your team's play? Uh, but first, um, holy shit, where the frig did Mikel Granlin come from? Uh, it was the start of the third period. This guy dipsy doodled through an entire Vancouver Canucks team, which um, a couple weeks ago. Uh, beat the Sharks by a touchdown and a field goal like it was a uh, miracle on ice or pond hockey game uh, when we're kids. Uh, this guy's going to be on Sports Center for the next week or maybe the whole month of December until Christmas. Um, that guy was having a game. Uh, I was so happy to see um, the uh, Sharks finally put a full 60 minutes together. Um, uh, echoing uh, Hetty's comments the other night, um, this team just isn't giving it, giving it an, a professional effort. And uh, yeah, um, Mikel Granlin was having a game. Uh, I wanted to make a slight criticism. Um, now, uh, I'll preface it by saying um, Mike Hoffman is uh, turning out to be the player that I thought he would be. Um, he's got an insane shot. And he's leading the Sharks in goals, as I projected a video a little bit back. But um, anyways, um, I really think it was selfish of him to go for the empty netter uh, to try and rack up another goal. Um, Mikhail Granlin was streaking down his wing on the other side there. And the guy's having a game. You got to give that guy a two-goal game. The, the first goal he scored as a Shark is literally like end to end dipsy doodle through the defense and everything. It, it, he looked like uh, Connor McDavid, at least old school Connor McDavid out there. Um, now Connor's injured. We all know that. And he's definitely not looking like a good season. I remember the Sharks missing the playoffs one year with Jumbo and Patty and, and Pavs and all these guys. So it can happen to the best of them. Um, you know, uh, the coach, obviously, uh, I think I commented on this, but at least my thoughts around it are he's, he was the, uh, the drop the ax on him as, uh, to blame. I don't necessarily think it was Woodcroft. Uh, I talked about, um, previous, uh, video as well about the depth of the Oilers and kind of the, um, you know, the, the fire in the oil sands, uh, what's the heck's going on over there. Um, and Yamamoto, uh, Costin and Nick Bukestad looked like a really good goal scorer. So when you lose that depth scoring that the, uh, Leafs seem to be finding with Greggy and a few other guys, um, congrats to Revo for finally, um, I was rewatching, uh, they were showing his Halloween scares again. That was so funny, man. Um, you're a great, um, locker room guy. And, uh, this leads me to the, um, the final piece where if you're a team where, um, you're on a losing streak and your reporters are asking not like air quotes, dumb questions, but, uh, like if you don't even want to be in front of these guys, but you have to be because you're a professional athlete, you're accountable for your play and your team, et cetera. Um, it's gotta be brutal to go into, uh, a reporter's negative questions. Now, if they, you know, obviously, as a reporter, um, you have to be accountable to your job. It's your duty to uh, get sound bites out of these guys and other things. And when it's not going well, it's not going well. It just goes downhill. So um, that's sort of my question to ponder is um, if you have reporters who are being excessively negative with their questioning and, you know, why didn't you do that? Why did it's like, um, I always dreaded the, uh, car ride home, uh, with my dad, um, playing double a hockey and St. Thomas minor hockey when we lost, because, um, I just felt like it would be, you know, nonstop. You did this wrong. You did that wrong. You could have done this. You could have done that. And hindsight's 2020. 20, so, uh, when it's going bad, it's going bad. And, uh, confidence is everything in a professional athlete. So, um, I would say, uh, if the reporters want to turn it around or when it turns around, if the reporters can ask uplifting questions or kind of like in, be inquisitive to, um, kind of get the player to get outside of their negative cycle and, uh, start playing a little bit better, um, that can go a long way. So, 
Um, yeah, it's uh, if you're if you're winning, it's usually silence and it's all good, right? Especially the car ride home after a, a game, it's a celebration. You can kind of uh, break away from hockey for a second. So I find um, this goes to work as well. Um, you know, uh, if you're looking down and you're you're counting stuff, um, like speaking of, you know, bartending and whatnot, if you're doing your counts and somebody's kind of yapping or yammering in your ear, uh, while well, you're clearly looking down and counting, or if you have a, you know, this is bartending language. If you have a bunch of chits in front of you and you're, you know, um, you're getting all the all the ingredients in your head, and you kind of zone in and and focus on your chits and, you know, and kind of clear some of the low hanging fruit, um, you know, some of the soda pops and whatever. But, you know, if you've got a lineup of chits and your brain is totally focused, uh, I want to say that. Um, that's another huge thing in work, in life and everything, uh, that these players, if you can be a focused athlete, if you can tune in and tune out everything like the yammering in your ear, AKA the crowd or the reporters, or even the coach, um, you know, the coach is probably pissed to hear this, but you know, if the coach's rhetoric, uh, if they've lost the voice of the room or whatever, ultimately it's in here, it's in your heart and it comes down to focus and tuning out everything um, as a person uh, in work, in life. And if you want to um, be a professional, then you have to learn to focus and tune out. And um, there was one other thought I had, but uh, yeah, maybe I'll leave it for another one there. Um, that's it for now. Cheers.